Mitchell sitting <laughs> down to join us after the Shockers. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, Jekyll and Hyde performance tonight, a tremendous first half, and then the second half got really scary before it was all said and done, but did manage to make some plays down the stretch, Coach. You know, Mike, um, we talked about the, the, the season being a season with ups and downs and, and um, um, highs and lows. Uh, we, but we thought that would be game to game, you know. We didn't, we didn't talk about it being half to half. And as beautifully as they played in the first half, it's, it's difficult at that time then to go in and, you know, kind of grind them a little bit and keep them on edge. I tried. I knew the only way we could lose that game was by making them live on the foul line, taking forced, contested, bad shots, which are like turnovers, and j then just having them outplay us from a toughness, urgency, energy standpoint. And then they did. They didn't come back and win, though. That's the, the lesson is learned, hopefully, without being burned. So, I mean, I got to figure out what Scott said to his team at halftime. Maybe he'll <laughs> tell me because it was really good. And he needs to know what I said to mine before the game. Um, Baylor's not going to roll over. They're a very good basketball team with a great coach, wonderful program. They have the, 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 the confidence and the, the swagger to, to come into Coke Arena, which I, which I am very thankful for. And I, I just I hope we can continue the series. Uh, it's a, such a great series. Down there, it was a very similar game last year down there. I mean, we could have gone either way. We made the plays at the end. Tonight, we finally made a couple of plays. Samaje's so play in transition was beautiful. I thought he took a charge down here. It was a big time block charge call, and they gave him the end one. But. Uh, we did. We just. We did enough in the first half, and then ultimately in the second half to win that game. You know, I asked you before the game, and you said the final score would indicate if you were ready for a game like this, and ultimately it it kind of did. But is it a, another good teaching tool in terms of the quality of this team you played shows your team that you can't ever assume a game is in the bag, no matter how big the lead is. Right. I mean, it's college basketball. That's a Big 12 team. They've got three or four guys on their team that we tried to recruit unsuccessfully. Um, so we know that there's talent over there and they're well coached. I knew that they're not going to roll over. And we gave them confidence by be being kind of, I don't know, I, without watching it, I don't want to really characterize what happened. Obviously, it wasn't good. It wasn't great basketball. So there's a fine line between playing um, – too fast and, 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 and wild with that big lead and, and then being too ultra conservative and tight and scared. And I think we were teetering on both of those. So I'm not sure, Dave. I, I just know that in the end, our first half was enough to carry us. I, again, I can't read the, scout, uh, the, the stat sheet. <laughs> I don't even know what they outscored us in the second half. But we won the glass by seven. Uh, they had five assists at 14 turnovers. We were 13 to 15. And... Um, so Maje Haynes Jones, let's talk about him. Best game he's played since he's been here yes. by far. I don't yes. care who he scored 31 against last year. It wasn't a team like this. And, you know, he made some errors in the second half. But, boy, 6 for 11 from 3. He goes 10 rebounds, 21 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double for Samaje Haynes-Jones, and I just thought he was tremendous. Yeah, yeah he was terrific. And our bench got longer tonight because poor Bear Chandler yeah, helped he us did. win that game. He'll get yes, some he more did. minutes. Yep. He, he played very well. I thought the turning point in the ball game was when uh, Baylor had cut the lead to 5, 60 to 55, 338 mark. Stevenson takes the inbounds pass on a nice set play that you set up does the little baby hook underneath, and all of a sudden the momentum shifts back to the Shockers, and they outscored uh, Baylor 11-8 to down the stretch. That was a great play. Uh, Jamie went and did a beautiful screen. Samaje looked him off and then gave him the little bounce pass. I would have preferred a higher percentage shot like a layup, but he kind of turned and just lofted it over the front rim. It was a big booster for us. It gave us a seven-point lead, as you mentioned. If we don't score there, they go down and make a two or a three. It's a two- or three-point game, and who knows. But, um, you know, there's a lot of critical plays in the game, and certainly that's one. I appreciate you mentioning that. And uh, 
man, we were so good in the first half. You know, I was going to say, I, other than your first half against Houston last year here, I don't remember another half in in recent years that was as dominant against a good team as that one was. Yeah, probably. yeah. Uh, you know, it, Scott's got a lot of new guys, so they didn't they they didn't have confidence in the first half. But boy, they got their confidence in the second. And our guys were through the roof confident in the first half and in the second half we were just I mean we were missing layups we were throwing the ball out of bounds when we had layups if we threw a good pass uh, Marcus to Jamie so it's a layup and he threw it out of bounds and he mixed a layup and we took some bad shots and oh man and then all of a sudden the lead starts going and and these guys I don't think they ever thought maybe when it was a five-point game that that Baylor could come back and win. I was certainly trying to watch the clock and, and eventually had to call timeout. And we so we had one timeout at the end, so I was holding that for an uh, out-of-bounds uh, situation if we couldn't get it in. Um, we, we had timeouts to use, and, and Samaje threw that wild pass on the top. I told Jamie, I said, don't screen, just pop out. He was wide open, but he, but he couldn't hear me. And right in front of our bench, that's how loud. The crowd was awesome. Uh, hopefully they enjoyed a, a tremendous evening of, of Shocker basketball and a big win. Another big uh, ball game from Dexter Dennis. Even though he didn't shoot particularly well, made both of his baskets early in the ball game, came up with a couple of huge rebounds as the clock started to wind down. He sure did. And, uh, you know, Eric. Er Eric played well too. Eric played well. He, he goes seven for thirteen. Um, uh, you know, he just those freshmen are just coming along, coming along, getting better. Uh, tonight it was tonight it was poor Bear Chandler. It, uh, Rod Brown gave us a couple of good little minutes in the in the first half, um, and and Ricky was okay, but Dexter and and um, um, Eric. For the freshman standpoint, along with Poor Bear, were the stars from the young group. And, and Poor Bear showed some of his skills, three assists, and made some nice passes out of the low post, and some big offensive rebounds in the first. Yeah, in it, in it, uh, uh, this is this is our team. Poor Bear Chandler. They've cut a lead from 35 down to seven, and he's going to decide it's time for him to, to figure out if he can make a three in Coconut. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he he going to let it fly. He's going to let it fly. That, but that's what we're dealing with. So uh, got to take the good with the bad. I'm going to go break this down. It's a great teaching point. This will be a great teaching point, and we won the game yes, against, a, against Baylor. So. All right, Coach, thank you. Thanks. Well done. Congratulations. I appreciate it, guys. Mm -hmm. Greg Marshall joining us after the Shockers' victory over